let's talk fake tickets. So, tour gets announced, you get all excited, you wanna go buy those tickets right away, you know, it's like Justin Bieber just announced, he's doing his next world tour, and you're all excited, you wanna go buy those tickets. Next thing you know, you're looking around, you see all these listings, tickets are like 300, 400, 10 million dollars, you're just like, oh my God, I need to have them, I need to have them right this second, but you need to hold on. Why do I say that? Because you might be buying some fake tickets. Now, what do I mean by fake tickets? I don't mean tickets that are never just gonna show up, well, might happen. But what I actually mean is that you might be buying tickets that don't actually exist as of this point. Let's dive into that. What you'll do, you'll go on, you'll go on to like StubHub or somewhere like that, you'll see a whole bunch of tickets listed up there, and then you're wondering yourself, hey, wait a minute, how are all these tickets already here? I mean, the box office hasn't even listed them yet, so for some tours they haven't even announced, you know, when they're gonna be on sale, yet you see hundreds and hundreds of tickets being listed on all these different resale websites. So it makes you wonder, you know, are these real tickets? Where did they come from? How did they get them? How do I get them? How do I be that person who has those tickets? Well, the reason you see so many is because not all of them are actually real. Yes, there are definitely gonna be some tickets that are legitimate because you'll have a lot of you know season ticket holders or venue season seat holders who will actually have their tickets kind of well in advance in the sense that if I'm gonna be buying season tickets year after year after year, I'm always gonna know where I'm sitting. So as soon as the schedule is announced, I can go ahead and list all my tickets up on StubHub or everywhere else. I don't have them in my possession just yet. I will have them when the season actually starts. So not a big deal. So you'll definitely see a lot of those listings. But on the flip side, you see a ton of tickets that are being listed. And a lot of them are actually in similar type of sections. So it makes you wonder like, are all these people season seat holders? No, obviously not. Some of these are you know, questionable. And these questionable ones, these are the ones we wanna watch out for. So how do we spot if they're fake? Let's dive into it. Now, what's one way to stop yourself from buying fake tickets? By smashing the like button. First thing you need to know when you're looking at resale markets, what you're gonna find is that when a new concert or a new tour or a new event gets announced, an event will be created right away and all of a sudden tickets will flood the market and there'll be tons of them available for you to buy immediately. Now, this should be your first red flag, buying tickets early, buying for the pre-sales. Basically, if the event is being created immediately after being announced, Obviously, some of these tickets, if not all these tickets, will not be real. By real, I basically mean they're actually short sale tickets. So, short sale, what does that mean? In tickets, it's sell high, buy low, in that order. What they're trying to do, sell the tickets in advance for a high price, and then end up fulfilling that order at a lower price sometime in the future. What could possibly go wrong? So, what are some of the problems with this? One, obviously, they don't actually have the tickets in their possession, meaning that they don't actually have the ability to, you know, list the proper ticket that you're gonna be buying. Therefore, they could be listing tickets that don't even exist, or they're in sections that aren't correct, or they're actual listing themselves. You know, the listing that they're putting up there doesn't actually mean what they're gonna be fulfilling with. Think of it this way, if you don't have the actual tickets to sell, how can you possibly list the tickets correctly? If they're going ahead, setting up a ticket to sell in, you know, section 21, row 15, and then they end up, you know, when they try and fulfill the order, there's nothing available in that row. What are they gonna do? So in one of my prior videos, I talked about it on StubHub's upgrade policy where you're allowed to upgrade within five rows or better. They're basically taking advantage of this policy. This policy was not designed for this use, but unfortunately, this is how they're getting away with short selling of these tickets. Most important thing is, if you hear of an event being announced, do not buy those tickets right away. Always try and wait for the pre-sale or the general sale to happen first, because one, it's gonna give you the opportunity to actually go ahead and buy those tickets yourselves from an authentic ticket source, and then two, you might actually be able to get at a cheaper price, because if you're buying tickets on the resale market, there's always that risk that you're gonna be paying more than face value, but if you're buying it from the box office, you'll basically know what you're getting yourself into, and you know these tickets are 100% authentic. That's not to say you can't buy tickets on the resale market, you can't buy them early. Obviously, you can go ahead, do whatever you want. I'm not here to police you, you can do anything you want, but you're generally gonna be paying a lot more more than you need to, and two, you're basically encouraging this type of unfortunate behavior. Some other risks that can happen with short selling is that sometimes these tickets won't even be fulfilled. So I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago back when the Super Bowl was happening with New England and I forget who they were playing. Basically what happened is a lot of tickets ended up being short sold. What people were doing is the same idea, going ahead, selling tickets well in advance of the Super Bowl being announced before any of the teams were being announced. As the event got near, uh, ticket prices started to rise. And now the issue they're running into is that people were now having to try and fulfill these ticket orders. The problem is that if they sold them at three or $4,000, the issue is that the ticket prices had now risen up to seven, eight, nine thousand dollars ten thousand $10,000 or higher. So what, what does that mean? It meant a lot of buyers were not end up going to end up getting their tickets. So 
what did these ticket sellers do? Some of them just canceled their orders and basically paid back the cancellation fee. Uh, and then two, some of them ended up doing is they actually ended up canceling those orders and then reselling them at a higher price to someone else. Obviously, you can see a lot of issues here. You have, if you're a fan, you're going ahead, you plan your trip. You know, if you're going to go to the Super Bowl or some other big event, obviously it's, it takes a lot of planning. You got to get your hotel, your flights, your, you know, accommodation, everything kind of all set up. And then you show up to the event basically on the day of the event, an hour before the event, you find out, hey, by the way, you get a phone call, hey, by the way, you're not getting your tickets, so sorry, better luck next time. Uh, what are you supposed to do about that? Like, they, they, they just kind of, not just ruin your day. it's a huge burden, it's a huge issue. It was a big, big problem. Since then, there's been a lot of changes specifically around the Super Bowl and how tickets are actually being listed and sold. So the issue around you know short selling has been addressed slightly uh, with major ticket exchanges. They've been addressed slightly. Obviously, there are people who will still sell them privately and then they do whatever they want. Nothing they can, people can't really stop that. But it was a huge, huge issue. A lot of people were left without tickets and it was just became a big nightmare. I mean, you might think, hey, these people are spending, you know, thousands of dollars. What's it to me? It doesn't matter. But at the same time, the same thing could happen at a ticket price that's, you know, only like 10, 20, 30 bucks. At, at that point, it's possible that sometimes, you know, someone will try and sell a ticket for 10, 20 bucks, um, just try and make a few dollars. And then they find out, oh, by the way, I couldn't end up fulfilling the order. They'll just hit the cancel, they'll just cancel the order, get hit with their penalty, and then leave it at that. From their perspective, yeah, they'll pay, you know, their seven, eight, $25 penalty and then just move on, no harm, no foul from their end. But from your perspective, obviously you're buying an experience. You're not just buying a ticket, you're buying an experience. When you're buying that experience, you're expecting everything to kind of work out. You know, you're gonna get the ticket to the event, you're gonna go have a lot of fun, you're gonna go see your friends, you're gonna have a great time. All these things are encompassed with that ticket that you're buying. When this type of thing happens to you, it, it, it really hurts. Whether it's, you know, like I said, whether it's a $20 ticket or a $2,000 ticket, it makes no difference. It's the same principle applies. Having tickets being short sold is a huge, huge problem. Now, second way to spot fake tickets online, much easier. It's actually just paying attention to the seating map. When a tour gets announced, what you can do, go ahead, take a look at the box offers or the venue, go ahead, see what the map actually looks like. And then if you're looking on a resale market, you end up seeing some tickets. A lot of times they'll be listed in sections that one, do not exist, or two, in rows that just don't make any sense. So sometimes it could be something as simple as, you know, you'll go ahead, you see the map, it'll say row S. And then you go to the actual venue website and you find out the last row in the whole building is row Q, Q, R, S. Obviously there's three rows missing there, yet they're listing these tickets. How can they possibly be real if they're listed in row S? So that's just one of those very easy flags and ways to notice these things. Second way you can see it is actually if the uh, section isn't labeled correctly. So a lot of the times on the floor, for example, they'll be listed, you know, floor one, two, three, or A, B, C, or however they kind of set it up. If that happens, you see the sections there, you go on the StubHub and see that there's a section that just says floor. What do you mean floor? Floor is, means nothing. It can be, you know, floor could mean the first seat in the last row, first seat in the first row, last seat. Anyway, it could mean it could mean anything. This is this, this this is fake. These are not real. These are these are short sold tickets. These are not real tickets. You don't want to buy those tickets. Also, when you see something that says row TBD, what do you mean row TBD? What do you mean it's to be determined? You can't determine what your row is in the future. It doesn't make any sense. Obviously, you either know where your row is or you don't. If you see a ticket that's listed as TBD row. Do not buy it, never buy them. Those are all short sold tickets. Definitely don't buy those tickets. You will be in for a lot of pain. It will be, not pain, but it, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, why would you buy something that doesn't yet exist? Like, it, it, I, I can't comprehend it. Just don't get it, I, I don't get it, I don't, I don't. So, how do you fix that? Very like I said, just go ahead, check onto the venue website or the venue box office. Um, a lot of times they'll be able to get a, a detailed seating map so you really know what the different sections are. Every tour and concert will also have their own specialized version of how they're setting up their floor map. So go ahead, make sure you understand how that looks. Then if you're going on a resale market, try and buy those tickets right away. Compare it the two, see if they make sense. If they do, I mean, and you see the price is what you want to pay, then obviously go ahead, do it. But if you see sections that don't exist, rows that don't exist, things that just don't make any sense, stay far, far, far away. So what's the moral story here? Just make sure you're informed because you gotta know when tickets are gonna go on sale. Just because the tour is announced doesn't mean tickets are immediately available. It is okay to be patient, just take your time, wait for the general sale, wait for the pre-sale, wait for those to happen to give yourself an opportunity to actually buy tickets at face value if you're worried that this ticket, this tour, is gonna be you know super popular and get very, very expensive. Give yourself a chance to actually buy real tickets from the box office if you can. If you must buy them though, right away, make sure you do your due diligence, check the map, check the rows, check the sections, make sure it all lines up, make sure it all makes sense and lastly make sure that the price is right if you can wait if you can't wait be careful and yes it is okay to be patient just 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 just, just wait a little bit a little bit it'll, it'll be fine nothing to worry about what could possibly 
go wrong. From your perspective, you may not see. And then the French one. Maybe it's announced like four times already. Obviously, these people are not showing up.